The Islamic State now administers thousands of square miles of captured territory. Its realm has at least 8 million Syrians and Iraqis living within it, an estimated 100,000 of whom swear allegiance to the organization. Though no other country recognizes it, the Islamic State is operating like a government with a bureaucratic hierarchy. How is it organized? At the very top is Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, who named himself Caliph. He functions in a role similar to that of a commander-in-chief. The Islamic State hasn't publicly described the chain of command and how decisions are made and implemented, but a number of outside experts have been researching the organization. One of them, Hashim al-Hashimi, a Baghdad-based expert on Islamist groups, described in detail to the Wall Street Journal who he says reports to whom. His general outline of the leadership structure has been corroborated by other experts and U.S. intelligence sources. Here's how it looks. Mr. Baghdadi has two top deputies. Abu Ali al-Anbari is responsible for Syria and Abu Muslim al-Turkmani for Iraq. Both deputies were former generals under Saddam Hussein. These three top leaders are referred to collectively as al-Imara, the Emirate. Key strategic and policy decisions for the Islamic State are made at the Emirate level. Who falls under them? 12 governors of the Islamic State's 12 so-called provinces report to the two deputies. But nine councils, which all report to Mr. Baghdadi's deputies, are responsible for creating policy and running the Islamic State. They function like departments or ministries. What do each of them handle? There's a leadership council, which reports to Mr. Baghdadi's deputies and is responsible for making laws and handling many important decisions. Those decisions are subject to approval by Mr. Baghdadi, but they, the members of the leadership council, have the right, in theory, to depose the caliph. The leadership council gets advice from the Shura Council, which weighs in on religious and military matters. It's composed of nine people who are versed in Islamic law. The military council calls the shots on fighting and defense of the Islamic State's acquired territory. Experts believe more than 25,000 Islamic State fighters are currently in Syria and Iraq. The legal council handles family disputes and religious infractions. It's in charge of recruitment of followers and also makes decisions on punishments, often in the form of executions. The security council handles the internal policing of the controlled territory, including checkpoints. Among its duties, carrying out executions. The intelligence council provides information to the leadership on the Islamic State's enemies. The Financial Council functions as the organization's treasury. It handles oil sales, weapons sales, and oversees cash estimated to be in the many millions of dollars. The Fighters Assistance Council supports the jihadists arriving from other countries. It finds them housing. It also helps smuggle foreign fighters in and out of Iraq and Syria. The Media Council issues the organization's official pronouncements and declarations. In addition to managing the Islamic State's social media and other communications, it regulates various other media outlets that serve the Islamic State. According to a Jordanian expert on Islamist groups, it has a close relationship with the legal council in terms of coordinating the publicity surrounding executions. At the moment, this is how the so-called Islamic State as a governing body is organized.